righteous and merciful, good in all things, and we just love and bless your holy name. We thank you right now, Lord, and we ask you right now to have your own way here in this service this morning, because we can't do anything without you. Can't even walk without you holding our hands. We need you, Father. We need you like never before. And we thank you right now even for your anointing that will destroy yokes and remove heavy burdens. We will thank you right now for using your manservant this morning to preach your word boldly unhindered. Our praise team as they lead us this morning in praise and worship. Pray blessings upon them. And we just thank you for everyone here today. And we just pray right now. Your blessings upon all, all, and we even bless your holy name. We bind Satan and give you no opportunity. Father, we lose your mercy, your goodness, your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's join in with the praise team this morning, giving God glory and honor and praise. If you're watching the service today, please like, share, and tag. All right, everybody, let's praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's put your hands together this morning. For God is good. His mercy endure forever. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise. The Lord with me. Come on, Judah. Come on. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. The Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. The Lord with me. Come on, bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Everybody wave your hands now. Everybody do a little dance. Oh, sing Judah now. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Praise y'all. Come on. Everybody do a little dance. Everybody wave your hands now. Everybody do a little dance. Oh, sing hallelujah, hallelujah, 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 he's worthy hey. to be praised now, hallelujah, come on and bless the Lord with me, hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah. 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 H
God bless you. Be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Open your Bible to Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22. Ready for the word today. Amen. The Acts of the Apostles. 22nd chapter. Just before we read our portion of scripture for this morning, let me say a few things concerning our subject. Our subject is the power of your testimony. The power of of your testimony. This is part two, and we subtopic the message last week. Tell your story. Amen. Tell your story. The power of your testimony. Brief review, the Apostle Paul in the text is in trouble again for preaching and standing on the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the midst of this trouble that he was in, and we talked about it last week, in the midst of the trouble that he was in, he gave his testimony. He gave his testimony. Uh, now that we are saved, now that we are Christians, we are now people of purpose. We are people of purpose. Our purpose is not just to go to work, not just to earn money, not just to have children, not just to seek to enjoy the pleasures of this life, but our purpose is to give glory to God. Amen. Now, if you, in case you were wondering about your purpose, that's your purpose. Your purpose is to give glory to God. In one place, Paul said, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or work or whatever you do, do everything and give glory in everything you do to God. Amen? Amen. So our purpose is to give glory to God. And one of the main ways that we glorify God is by telling others what the Lord has done in our lives. That's the main way you give glory to God. You give glory to God again by telling others what God, what Christ has done in your life. And even more specifically, you tell people how Jesus saved you. Jesus saves. Amen. He still saves. Amen. And he may have done some great things in your life, but I want you to know today the greatest thing that the Lord has done in your life is to save you. Uh, we sing a song right here sometime, but it was a great thing. The greatest thing. And you can think of a whole lot of good and great things the Lord may have done for you. But the greatest thing the Lord Jesus Christ has ever done for you was to save you through dying on the cross at Calvary. Amen? Amen. And last week we noticed and the book of Acts is not just a book of New Testament history, but it is also a pattern book. We can get patterns in the book of Acts for the New Testament church. And as we look at this testimony that Paul gave, we see a pattern for giving testimonies. And, and so we said that if you are saved uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can also follow the same pattern that we're going to see in the text, or we started seeing last week in the text. Now, if, if Jesus has saved you, then you have a testimony that others need to hear. If Jesus saved you, you have a testimony that others need to hear. Do you know the best advertisement is still word of mouth? 
that's still the best advertiser. Many years ago, I had an opportunity to get close with a local attorney, and he would not advertise. He said, I don't think, he said, I don't think a good, a good attorney needs to advertise because people who he has helped will go tell others Amen. that he's a good lawyer. Well, if Jesus is a good savior, and you know it, based on personal experience, you ought to be willing and ready to tell others what he's done for you. In this text, there are three uh, patterns, three portions, three steps of the testimony that Paul gave. Number one, we learn from his testimony, number one, that we need to tell other people what we were or what we were like before Jesus. Tell other people what we were or what we were like before Christ came into our lives. Number two, we need to be willing to tell people what happened to us, what actually happened. And number three, we ought to be able to tell people what we are now like since we have met Jesus. How many of you know there ought to be a change? Should be a change between now and when you first got saved. Now last week we talked about number one, and we said tell people what you were like before Christ. And we said you don't have to get on the soapbox or get a microphone and stand on the street corner and tell everybody your life story. But what God will do is God will put people in your path that need to hear your Christ story. He will put people in your path, in your daily interactions, in your daily dealings. He will actually put people in your path who don't know Christ, who need to hear your Christ story. Now this was in chapter 22, verses one through five. We're not gonna go through that again today because everybody in here who is saved has a BC story. BC means before Christ. If you weren't here last week, you can get a CD on your way out to hear that first part of the message or it's on Facebook, you can watch it there. Today we wanna to go to number two. We want to go to number two. We need to tell people what happened to us. Tell people what happened to us. If you got saved, something happened. Amen. Hmm? Amen. You sing a song in the church, you know, uh, he touched me, something happened, and now I know. Huh? <laughs> if he touched you, something happened. If you touched him, something happened. If you got saved, Something happened. Anybody here saved today? Repeat after me. Something happened to me. Something happened to me. So Paul told his salvation story. He told exactly what happened. And we got to be willing to tell what happened to us, to others. Because again, I'm going to say a whole lot of people really think that God and Christ are out of business. They really think God and Christ are out of business. And see, many of us came up in a day when a lot of people went to church and Sunday school on Sunday, so they got a basic, a basic knowledge of God and Christ. But how many of y'all know we live in a day now where there's some people who never even been near church? And now since they don't, you don't have to go to church to have a funeral, a whole lot of people never go. You might as well say amen, it's true. So we are the only church a lot of folk are gonna see. We're the only church a lot of folks are going to see. We're, we're the only Christ a lot of folks are going to see. So we got to, we've got to be willing. All right, let's look at what happened. Acts 22, verse 6. This is the portion today. Acts 22, verse 6. And you've already read it, so I'm not going to have to take a lot of time. Acts 22, beginning with verse 6. You have it? Amen. And it came to pass, this is Paul talking, giving his testimony, that as I made my journey, I was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, Suddenly, there shone from heaven a great light. Can you say a great light? A great light round about me. And I fell into the ground. And uh, there's no horse in there he fell off of. I thought I'd just throw that in there. A lot of people say he fell off his pony. There wasn't no pony in the scripture. It's <laughs> Verse 7 said, And I fell into the ground. And heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Remember last week he told 
who he was before Christ. He was a persecutor of Christians. That's who he was. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Verse 8. And I answered, who art thou, Lord? That's important. And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light. They saw the light too. And were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, and I said, underline the Bible, what shall I do, Lord? And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And he said unto me, arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came unto Damascus. Now your salvation story is the circumstances and situations that brought you to the place where you saw the light. If you saved, that means you have seen the light. And your salvation story is the circumstances and situation that brought you to the place where you saw the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your salvation story is how you saw the light and then received Jesus into your life. If you're saved, it means you received Jesus into your life. Now let me, let me, let me put something here because if you don't remember your story or if you don't have a story, I'm going to say this gently. You might not be saved. Many years ago, I, I had a conversation with an old, a old deacon. And I won't say where I was. I just had a conversation with an old deacon. And, and uh, I asked the old deacon, I said, uh, when did you get saved? And he began to tell me that when he joined church, and when he was baptized. And you need to understand, brothers and sisters, there's a difference between being saved and just joining the church. Are you hearing me? There's a difference. I didn't press him on it, but I want you to know, because I respected him, his age, but there's a difference between, between joining church and getting saved. In my own life, I never will forget when I was about 13 years old, my mother came to me and she said, now boy, I'm going to tell you something. She said, it's time for you to join church. She said, you 13, because people thought 13 was the age of accountability. When the age of accountability is when you know better, when you know of Christ. But I was 13, so, you know, my dad's church got out earlier than my mom's. They were holding us. They stayed in at 3 o'clock. And my father's church got out around one. So I joined his church. I mean, wasn't no need to stay in all day. And I will forget, my grandmother, my grandmother lived in New York, and my mother called and said, he joined church at baptism day to such and such and such, and she got on the train and came home because she wanted to see me baptized. Staunch holiness lady, Pentecostal holiness, and she came home, and I never will forget, uh, she came to the baptism and Reverend put me down under the water and came up and I came and she said, oh, glory to God and hallelujah. She just went off in tongues and started praising God and carrying on and, and I'm looking around and wondering, what, what's, what's wrong with her? <laughs> Why? Because all the while, nobody ever said anything to me about being saved. And some of you who've been in the church a long time had the same experience. Nobody really said anything about getting saved, you know, or anything. You just went through a motion. As a matter of fact, there wasn't even any instruction for me. I'm not criticizing, but I'm just trying to say that, that, that I had no salvation experience. I went down the center and came up a wet center. And such were some of you. But if you save, you remember. I should have a witness. If you really save, you remember. 
You not remember, you may not remember the exact day and the, and the exact hour, but you remember when you got saved. I need a witness. And all of us have a story to tell. Huh? My story may not be yours. And we said last week, everybody, you know, everybody hadn't done a lot of, you know, hard sin. I mean, sin is sin, but everybody hadn't done a hard. Some people, some people just got saved as children because their parents introduced them to Christ at an early age. And they said the salvation uh, sentence and received Christ as their safe. Some people never got a chance to get out and, you know, do a whole lot of stuff. And then others did. But guess what? All of us still ought to have uh, in our memory when yes, sir. Yes, sir. we receive Christ. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't remember that, you may want to do it today. And I'm not trying to be funny. It's very serious. Because if you are truly saved, you remember more than just going to church. Or more than just saying I'm a Christian. Everybody now say they're a Christian. But your salvation story is the circumstance and situation that brought you to the place where you saw the light. It took a hospital bed for me. But I never shall forget it. I never shall forget calling on the Lord from the hospital bed and saying, save me. Third floor in no memorial hospital. That's my story. Huh? What's your story? Where did God save you? How did God save you? Are y'all living here today? Where did God save you? How did God save you? What were, what's the story? You see, everybody, everybody likes a good story. That's why when God, when you put people in, in when God puts people in your path that are, and he'll put people in your path that's going through something similar to what you've been through, everybody likes a good story. They do. That's why y'all look at TV and look at movies. Because you like a good story. You like a good storyline. Even when you watch your team, you don't, I mean, it's not a good story to just see them blow somebody out. You like it, you like it when it's tight. You say, well, they're coming down to the fourth quarter and the time is running out. And man, see, that's a story. And people like story. And see, you have a story to tell. And people will listen to your story if you'll just tell it. Are you hearing me? So all of us should remember a time when we made a decision. See, being saved is a decision. What, remember time when we made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should remember what happened to, 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 to bring us to the point where we made that decision. Huh? This is a good message because it's going through. So people in contact need to hear your story. And now, now, so people say, well, you know, it ain't, ain't none of their business. It ain't none of their business. Okay, all right. It's God's business. God did something to you. God did something for you. He saved you from an eternity of torment. Are you hearing me? And you know, a lot of people don't believe that today, you know. It's funny how, how, how deceived, what well, a deceived day we live in now. You know, where, where people believe now, all you got to do to die, all you got to do to go to heaven is die. Hmm? It's quiet now. Isn't it interesting now how everybody goes to heaven? Don't make no difference what kind of life they have. You know, nothing. It's everybody now, all you got to do to go to heaven is die. Everybody, R-I-P, rest in peace, R-I-H. You know, for some, R-I-H don't mean heaven. And the other place, there's no rest. But you must be born again. If you've been born again, shoot your hand up in the air right fast. Say, thank you, Jesus. You gotta be born again. You must be. So what happened? That's the story. What happened? And it, may, it may not be a whole lot of drama. I just went, you know, I went to church when they heard I need to be born again. I went home and prayed and asked the Lord to save me. See, it may not be a whole drama. And then some of us here have a lot of drama. But what makes the difference is you got saved. 
So you can, you can bless somebody else with your story. Your story might be just enough to bring somebody to Christ and help them miss eternal hell. Now, before we got saved, a lot of us used to use hell like a cuss word. You know, somebody make you mad, you tell them, go to hell. But let me tell you something. You don't even wish hell on your worst enemy. I don't care what they did to you. I don't care when they did it to you. You don't want anybody. See, see now the love of Christ has been shared abroad in your heart. Come on, if any lovers in here. The love of Christ is shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. The Bible said one problem with the last days is the love of many have waxed cold. People only have natural affection. That's not talking there about homosexuality. Natural affection means people don't even have even the smallest amount of, 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 of yearning and love for other people's well-being. That's what that means. But those of us who are saved and have Christ in our life, we're supposed to be lovers of all men. We may not love them all the ways, but we don't want to see anybody go to hell. And I can think of some folk who have done some terrible things to me, but I don't want to see them go to hell. Why? Because the love of Christ constrains me now. Are you hearing me? So you gotta, you gotta tell your story. You gotta, and all of us, all of us have committed the same sin before Christ. We talked about that last week because all of us have sin. Come short of the glory of God. And all of us who are really saved was saved, watch this, by grace to faith. And that wasn't of yourself. We were saved by grace through faith. So what did Paul, what happened to Paul? Watch this, Paul saw the light. I said, Paul saw the light. Look at verse 6 in the Bible. Look at verse 6 again. Verse 6 says, And it came to pass, as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus, about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me, and I fell unto the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me. This was his day. I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? He said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. When they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice that spake unto me. Let me tell you something. Every last one of us who are saved are light bearers. We're light bearers. Every last one of us who are saved, we're light bearers. Yes, See, watch this. And people around you may not see a light come from heaven, but they see you. They see you. That's why your witness is so important. They see you. Let's see who you are. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Look at it. Matthew chapter 5. Keep your finger there. We're coming right back. I just want to show you this. Because we are light bearers. That's who we are. Those of us who will say we're light bearers. Matthew chapter 5. Go to verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. Now everybody say with me. Say Jesus is talking to me. He's talking to me. Jesus. Verse 14. Matthew 5 and 14. Said Jesus is talking to you. He says ye are. Ye are the light of the world. That's who you are. Let's take the King James word out. You are. Jesus talking to us this morning. We are the light of the world. Not only that, we are a city that is set on the hill. A city set, that is set on the hill cannot be hid. So look, neither do men light a candle, put it on a bushel, but on a candlestick. And guess what it does? It giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And guess what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're here to glorify God. I'm happy. You're not here. You're not here just to work and make money. 
You're not here just to have a good time. You're not here just to style and profile. You are here to give glory to God. That's why you're here. And he said, you are the light of the world. And so he says, look, he says, you can't, you can't light a candle and then hide it. You can't light a candle and then hide it. Men don't light a candle and put it on the bushel, but they put it up on a candlestick. And it gives light to everybody. When they see you, they see the light. It's not the day the precept. That's why your witness is important. You can't never come to the point where you have your good evil spoken of. That's why the Bible says shun the very appearance of evil. Paul said I can do a whole lot of stuff, but everything I do is not expedient. It's not good. Paul said if, I, if, if, my, eating, if my even eating certain food offend people, I won't even eat it. And the word meat there doesn't mean like meat, like meat, but it means like certain foods. The word fruit, meat is a, is, a, is a general term for food. So he says, if, if there's certain foods that's going to offend somebody, I won't even, I'm not going to eat it in front of them. You know why? Because you don't want to cause anybody to stumble. See, see, it's more to this thing, saints of God, than just going around telling folk after you've, after you've done something which is sin, and then tell folk, you can't judge me. Sweep around your door instead of you trying to sweep. No, no, you have a responsibility after naming the name of Christ to depart from iniquity. That's your responsibility. Shun the very appearance of it if it looks like it may be wrong. Then you don't go that way. You don't do that. You don't go somewhere and, and do something that in your mind you know is sinful and then go around and tell for you can't judge me. Come on, I'm smiling while I'm saying this. See, you can't do that. You got to live, you got to live responsibly. You got to grow, you got to grow in grace. You got to increase in favor with God. And as you do that, you will also increase in favor with man. So you got to let your light shine. Because you're the light. The light shine from heaven. That was Jesus. Jesus talked to him. But now you're the light. And now you're going to talk to people. Amen. Now you're going to talk to people. If we, hide our, if, we, if we hide our light. Get right in the midst of a sinner. Hear their situation. And all we say is I'm praying for you. I'm going to pray for you. No. Go, go a step further. And identify with them. Tell them where you have come from. And tell them what happened to you. Again, I'm not saying you got to broadcast it from Hotel Kinston top flow. But I'm saying what, what God will do is he'll, he'll bat you with somebody. He'll have somebody come right by your path that needs to hear where you have been and what happened to you. Now you, ask, now you tell me how folk going to get saved if we don't do that. So the church has come up with all other kind of ways they think they can do it, but it, it comes right down to one-on-one -on -one interaction. People born into the kingdom one soul at a time. When you leave this church, you go and let your light shine among men that they might see your good work. How else folk going to get saved? Tell me. How? And see, you can't come here and say you don't care whether folk get saved or not. So, here's something the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me, he said, tell the people, we all have some things we want God to do for us. We all have some things we want God to do for us. Well, here's an email from heaven. God has some things he wants you to do for him. All of us, we are. I'm God, I'm, I'm believing. I'm believing you, God, for this. God said, I'm believing you to testify. I 
I got my faith out there for a new car, some new clothes, a new house. God says, my faith is in you that you're going to tell somebody where I brought you from. Because nothing like a good story. He wants to hear your story. And so we got to get off the, I just heard the Lord just ran through my ears. He said, we got to get off this pride thing. Because the, the pride thing, the pride thing is where we don't want anybody to ever know we struggle. We want people to always believe. We always been like this. The devil is a liar. And if you're saying that, <laughs> who is in here that the Lord has brought from a long way? I need this one time. Well, see, don't get caught up in pride. Don't get caught up in pride. Pride means, that, you know, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I've always had it going on. <laughs> In your imagination, you probably did. But God had to bring you from somewhere. He had to bring you from somewhere to somewhere. Can I get a witness? See. I, I can't come up here and, and pretend like I've always stood in this sanctuary. I, I stood over there in that little sanctuary over there. Without a pastor study. Without a bathroom. See, I can't sit and pretend like it's always been like this. No, it wasn't. This used to be trees and woods and, and lions and tigers and bears right here. And a dirt road. I can't get no help. I ain't ashamed where the Lord brought me from. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So God has some things. You know what obedience, obedience is? Obedience is when you do something God wants you to do. Let me get away man's on that one. Obedience is when you do something God wants you to do. And he will then do something you want him to do. I ain't getting no ideas on that. Obedience is when you do something God wants you to do. And then God says, okay, I'll do something you want, I, you want me to do now. And he will. So look right at verse 20. Go back to Acts 22. Let's, let's close now. Acts 22, verse 8. Acts 22, verse 8. You got it? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were and they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Now verse 10 is so important. Verse 10 is so important. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? That's enough right there. Where Lord means master, ruler, owner. What shall I do, Lord? What shall I? Somebody said to me, what shall I do, Lord? What shall I do, Lord? <laughs> now, now, that sounds backwards. So, so here's what that says. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what you want me to do? That's, the most, that's one of the most powerful questions that a human being can ask the Lord. What you want me to do? Let's practice. Say, Lord, what you want me to do? Yeah, see. Some of y'all glad you had on mass things. Oh, what you want me to do? <laughs> oh, what you, oh, what you want me to do? Oh, what you, what you want me to do? <laughs> that question will get you blessed. I wish I had a witness. 
that question, if you ask God that question, that will bless you. And one thing God says, I want you to tell everybody about my saving power. Because people don't know I'm still in business. They know folk go to church. They know folk talk church talk. But they don't know I can still turn a life around. And I need somebody just to testify. Testify that Jesus saved. To the utmost. That's the way they said it on my holiness side. My holiness side. To the utmost. Jesus said he'll, he'll pick you up. I ought to have one witness. He'll pick you up and he'll turn you around. Anybody here know about that? He'll pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. I know he's still saved. So you got to find a way, you got to find a way, saints. You got to find a way, and it's not hard. You got to find a way to weave Jesus into your conversation. When he puts people in your path, you got to find a way. I was so blessed the other day, and uh, I went to get my booster shot, and don't even, don't even think about that, because I just want you to hear what I'm going to say. Because, you know, whether you get boosted or not, that's your business. So I ain't going to judge you at all. That's your business. That's a personal thing. But I went to get mine. And so while I was there, it was amazing because right beside me, right beside me, there was an old, old Caucasian lady. She was old and kind of feeble. And she sat down in her chair. And I was in the next chair, socially distanced, at the next station. And I was getting my boost. And so, uh, the lady sat down. And so they start asking you little questions. They said, they say, look, uh, how did you do with your first series of shots and blah, 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 blah. And uh, how do you feel today and all that kind of stuff. Did you have any side effects and blah, 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 asking all these questions. I'm not, I'm, I'm speaking about that, but I'm just setting up what happened. So I'm not even really talking to you about the shot. I'm talking about something else. So at any rate, the lady sat down in the chair and she was kind of feeble. She was old and her hair was white and she sat in the chair. And so the lady who was doing her interview asked her, the Lord, and the Lord heard it. The Lord said, I and mean, she said to the lady, uh, Miss so-and-so, how you doing today? And you know what the lady said? She said, you know, honey, she said, my husband has been dead over 20 years, but I received the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, and he has been with me every day. I said, boom, shakalaka. She slid her testimony. She just slid that testimony. In there so cool. I want to give her a soul sister card. I mean, she slid. She says, she says, my husband been dead 20 years, but since I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, he's been with me every day. Boom! Explosion. She slid her testimony in the so smooth. Are you hearing me? And many of us in public, we act like we're ashamed of Christ. You preachers help me. Preachers help me. Who was it the Lord got upset with because in their sickness uh, they, they sought the doctor? Who was that? Who was it? Asa. Asa, okay. Let me, tell you, let me tell you the truth about that. Because I studied it. I just couldn't remember his name. There's so many names in the Old Testament. And ain't nobody, name in, the, ain't nobody in the Old Testament named Keisha and, and Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I checked that out and so the problem was not that he sought the doctor it was that, it, that he sought the doctor first see 
So, 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 see, so, 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 see, we can't, we can't, as we go through the things of life, we can't, we can't give worldly institutions and worldly, worldly things credit that God gets. Even if the doctor treated you, God healed you. See, and too many times we miss opportunities to give credit to God. And I'm not bashing doctors, I go to them. I go to them. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't miss your opportunity to give God to glory. Did you get that? No one didn't say, Pastor Lawson said don't go to the doctor. I never said that I go regularly. See, last time I went, I felt like a pig because you see, you need a pneumonia shot, you need a flu shot, you need a shingle shot. I said, my God. So I go to the doctor. Are you hearing me? Sister told you ladies another week, go get your mammogram. Brothers, go get your ground. <laughs> as bad as it is, go get it. See, so I go to the doctor. So I'm not saying that, but my, I'm telling you, when you get up from a sick bed, I ought to have a witness. I'm, I'm going home. I'm going, I'm going home. I'm going to leave y'all up. When you get up from the sick bed, and you didn't know whether or not you could get well. And, and, and the doctor kept saying, we're going to try this. We're going to try that. We're going to try the other. They're not to give you sense enough to know it wasn't nobody but God. I can't get no help here. So we'll close like this. I told you last week, we were born at, we were born at this time just for this time. We were born at this time just for this time. Just think, God Hail you back from coming into the world to a time like this. You ever thought about that? He knew, he knew when you came along that you were going to be here when the COVID hit. See, he held you just for a time like this. And he has a purpose for your life. And your purpose is to give him glory. Take your eyes off the world. Take your eyes off the unsaved. They haven't seen the light. See, we've been delivered from the power of darkness. We've been delivered. Come on, somebody said, I've been delivered. See, you've been delivered from the power of darkness. You've been translated into the kingdom of God and his dear son. You have seen the light. You know who the light is? God. God is light and in him there is no darkness people who are not saved can't see they're blind but you have seen the light you are children of light Paul said he said walk like children of light so get your eyes off the world get your eyes off the world then you, you won't want to be doing everything the world does you were born just for this time and you got a story to tell. You know, we, 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 we sing a testimony and we don't even realize it. Everybody here, everybody who's been in church most of your life, you know the testimony. It's a, it's a testimony. We never thought about it was a testimony. There's a man named John Newton. And uh, John Newton wrote a hymn based on his testimony. See, he, he grew up with no religious convictions. I checked out his story. He grew up with no particular religious conviction. And then he was drafted into the Royal Navy. And after getting out the Navy, since he was familiar with ships and stuff, he got involved in the Atlantic slave trade. He was a slave trader. John Newton I'm talking about. And then in, in 1748, this is where his story goes. This is testimony. While they were bringing slaves Cross, cross the pond, cross the ocean. A terrible storm came. Terrible storm. Y'all need to hear me. 
and, and he stood there on that, on that ship thinking he was going to die. And on that ship, he called out to God for mercy. I said he called out to God for mercy. And do you realize God saved him? God saved him. And then he wrote his testimony. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. I once was lost. This is his story. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. I wish somebody knew about this. I was blind, but now I see. That's all about testimony. And then, Brother Jeffrey, we, we called up with it in, in our church. And we said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary. I was warm. I was sad, but I found in him a resting place. I wish there was some saved folk in here this morning. I said, I came to Jesus just like I was. I was weary, I was warm, I was sad, but I found in him a resting place. And you know what he did for me? He made me glad. I said, he made me glad. Is anybody here that God has made glad? Give him praise and glory. Anyhow, give him praise and glory. If he brought you from a long way, give him praise and glory. If he restored your soul, give him praise and glory. If he picked you up out the Maori cave, set you on a rock, Establish your goings. Put a song in your heart. Clap it in your hands. And run it in your feet. Is there anybody here that's saved today? I tell you, I ain't ashamed of it. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved if I'm at the White House. I'm saved. I'm saved if I'm in the outhouse. I'm still saved. I'm saved. Anybody saved today? And you know what? Through the storms of life, my soul. I said my soul is going to keep on singing. I'm saved. And you know what? I got a story to tell. I said I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell. He brought me all the way. Wasn't nobody but Jesus. I know you ain't supposed to talk to folk, but point somebody said, Wasn't nobody but Jesus. And tell somebody what you're looking at now ain't nobody but Jesus. Everything I got ain't nobody but Jesus. Everywhere I be ain't nobody but Jesus. If it's good, it was Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I give him all the glory. I'm looking for folk here to give him all the glory. If you give him all the glory, stand up and lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Wasn't nobody but you. I owe it all. I owe it all. To you. Somebody lift your voice like a trumpet and shout glory to God. And I got to testify. I can't be cool. I can't be coy. When I think. I said when I think, somebody better come get me. When I 
my feet. What you doing, Lawson? I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking. I'm just thinking. When I think, I said I'm thinking right now. When I think of the goodness, ain't it good? I can't be proper. He said, is it? Ain't it good? When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I can't behave myself. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. And I want to tell you right here, everything, everything that happened to me that was good, said everything that happened to me that was good everything that happened to me that was good God did and I got to give him the glory I've got to tell it everywhere I go I got to tell it in food line. I got to tell it in Piggly Wiggly. I got to tell it on my job. I got to tell it at the ball game. I got to tell it at the beauty parlor. I got to tell it at the barber shop. Everywhere. One more praise check and we out there. How many of y'all here could have been sleeping in your grave? But God, I said, but God, I said, but God. Look at your neighbor say, some people been through what I've been through. Lost a man, but I'm still here. Clothed in my right mind. Wasn't nobody but God. Some folk been through what I've been through. Killed themselves, but I'm still here. Wasn't nobody but God. I wish I had some but God folk. Wasn't nobody but God. And point at five folk and tell them I'm still here anyhow. I'm still here anyhow. Wasn't nobody but God. And I got to give him the praise. I got to give him the glory. I got to give him the honor. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet and give God praise today. He's a good God. He's a great God. And we got a story to tell. Huh? We got a story to tell. And we got to tell it. I said, we got to tell it. Because people need to know God's a good God. Y'all get your microphone. God's a good God. And he's a great God. And I'm a witness. He can do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains out of my way. God is a wonderful God. Some folk out there need to hear that. And you need to tell them. It's your time to tell your story. I'm talking about right now. Don't let another person cross your path 
and you make small talk with them, they start telling you about how bad it is and how rough it is, and you just say, you just say, oh, I'm praying for you. No, you got to do more than pray for them. If they're not saved, they need more than prayer. Amen. God's a good God. Amen. They need Jesus. I said, they need Jesus. Are you hearing me? They need Jesus. And you got to tell them about Jesus. You got to tell them about Jesus. He can do anything. You got to tell them. But fail. You got to tell them. He has moved so many mountains out of my way. Oh, God is a wonderful God. God is a good God. a good guy. Lift your voice like a trumpet and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Come on. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. He's worthy. All over this building, if you've received Christ, if you've got a Christ story, I want you to lift your hand. You've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Lift your hand right where you are. Put your hand down. If you couldn't lift your hand today, I want to give you an opportunity to be saved today. Just in case you're here. If you couldn't lift your hand right then, I want to give you an opportunity. I want you to do one thing for me. If you walk right down that aisle, stand right here. I pray with you could leave here today knowing that if your heart were to stop beating, you would open your eyes in the presence of Jesus and you'd be in heaven if you pray this prayer with me today and believe it in your heart. If there's somebody here that's not saved, couldn't raise your hand. Won't you come down here right now? Don't be ashamed. Everybody in here has a salvation story. Some of us were saved at church. Yeah, some of us were saved in church. So it's nothing wrong with it. If you're here today, I want to give you an opportunity. Don't miss it. If you're watching this by Facebook or on some other media platform, find you a praying space right now and get on your knees and just ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Invite him into your heart, into your life. He'll come in. If you ask him and then confess him as your Savior and confess him as your Lord and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible says you will be saved. Wherever you are, you can be saved today. It's the most important decision a person ever makes in their life. It's the most important decision.
most important decision you will ever make. church say amen. amen on the way to your seat point the three or four people said I got a story and I'm going to tell it you may have your seat <laughs> Pastor Della going to give us some announcements and after that Elder Jerry Harris going to come pray over the offering and then we'll be dismissed Announcements, please.